Lasers are far stranger than they seem. They're one of the most peculiar and powerful forms of light humanity has ever created. They behave nothing like a flashlight, an LED, or a regular bulb. They're so special that the fundamental principles behind them were proposed by none other than Albert Einstein over 100 years ago. And although it sounds like science fiction, the famous laser cannons capable of destroying objects actually exist. But how is it possible to concentrate so much light in one direction, strong enough to cause damage? Well, uh, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Today, lasers are used in just about everything. They're in hospitals, surgical procedures, precision tools, barcode readers, security systems, military weaponry, telecommunications, and countless other applications. Interestingly, although lasers today are advanced tools, for many of us, our first encounter wasn't in a hospital or scientific experiment, but rather as a toy. Who hasn't had one of those cheap laser pointers to play with a cat or annoy classmates? The ones with interchangeable red patterns that seemed to go on forever? And even though it was just a toy, there was something hypnotic about it. You could point it at the sky, the street, or your backyard, and it was always visible. That's when many of us first asked ourselves, how far does a laser beam go? Does it keep going forever? Does it stop eventually? Is there some limit to this type of light? The answer isn't as simple as it seems, and to understand it, we need to go back more than 100 years. Because, yes, although it doesn't seem like it, the principle that makes lasers work was proposed by none other than Albert Einstein. In 1917, Einstein published a paper describing a strange phenomenon called Stimulated Emission of Radiation, a quantum mechanism in which an excited atom can be induced to emit a photon identical to the one that stimulated it. Decades later, this theory became the basis for creating lasers. The key to a laser, as Einstein theorized over a century ago, is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, hence the acronym LASER. To put it simply, imagine an atom as a tiny ball capable of absorbing energy. Once it absorbs enough energy, it becomes excited, entering an unstable state. This excited atom wants to return to its original, more stable state, and to do so, it must release the absorbed energy as a photon, a particle of light. So far, this sounds normal, right? But Einstein discovered something extraordinary. If a photon emitted by an excited atom passes near another excited atom, it can stimulate that atom to immediately release its energy. The incredible part is that the atom doesn't just emit any photon. It emits one identical to the stimulating photon. Identical means it has the same frequency, direction, and phase. Basically, the two photons are exact clones. Now imagine you have not one or two excited atoms, but millions, all releasing identical photons simultaneously in the same direction. This is precisely what's happening inside a laser. A typical laser contains a special material, you know, like a gas, crystal, or even liquid, filled with excited atoms. When external energy, such as electricity or intense light, is applied, these atoms become excited and begin releasing photons through stimulated emission. But to ensure all these photons travel together in an organized and concentrated way, something else is needed. Mirrors. Inside a laser, two mirrors are placed facing each other, one of which is partially reflective. Photons start bouncing between these mirrors, and each time they pass through the material, they stimulate more atoms to release identical photons. This continuous bouncing amplifies the light to extraordinary levels. Eventually, when the light is intense enough, it passes through the partially reflective mirror emerging as a very thin, concentrated, coherent beam. But what does coherent mean? It means all photons travel exactly in the same direction, phase, and wavelength. This makes laser light incredibly pure, 
precise and powerful, like millions of soldiers marching perfectly synchronized. This coherence sets laser light apart from ordinary artificial light, which disperses in all directions and mixes various frequencies. Laser light is ordered, pure, and monochromatic. Now that we roughly understand how lasers work, how can they burn, cut, or destroy things? The key lies in two factors. Coherence, which we just discussed, and power. Consider this simple analogy. The sun emits enormous amounts of radiation dispersed everywhere. However, with a small magnifying glass, you can focus some of that dispersed radiation onto a tiny spot. Though the total light passing through the lens is relatively small, concentrating it into a tiny area dramatically raises the temperature, allowing you to burn leaves, melt plastic, or start small fires. Lasers take this principle to another level, much more precise, concentrated, and powerful. A common laser pointer consumes only a few milliwatts, enough to illuminate, but not to harm. However, increasing the power to a few watts changes everything drastically. A laser of just a few watts can easily burn through plastic or paper. Increasing the power further to hundreds or thousands of watts allows lasers to perform tasks straight out of science fiction like cutting thick steel sheets in seconds. Industrial lasers like these exist today, widely used in manufacturing cars, airplanes, precision surgical tools, and military applications, including shooting down drones or missiles in mid-flight. But how are lasers capable of this? Unlike a magnifying glass, lasers generate perfectly coherent and concentrated light from the start. When we increase the power, we deliver an immense amount of energy directly to a minuscule area, like poking with a needle rather than hitting with a tennis ball. Returning to our initial question, what is the limit of a laser? How far can it really go? In theory, laser light could travel infinitely in a straight line if we were in space with no air, dust, or particles floating around. NASA even conducted experiments bouncing laser beams off mirrors placed on the moon, accurately measuring the distance between the Earth and moon, about 238,850 miles. This proves a laser can travel over 200,000 miles in seconds. However, on Earth, the air, humidity, dust, and pollution gradually scatter and weaken laser beams over long distances. High-powered lasers used by scientists and militaries can remain effective for miles or even tens of miles. Though practically limited by power and atmospheric conditions, theoretically lasers have no limit. This topic is so fascinating we could discuss it for an hour without getting bored. But before finishing, let me quickly share some extraordinary laser trivia. Today, scientists propose using powerful lasers to propel tiny solar sails at incredible speeds. If you've ever watched a Blu-ray, DVD, or listened to a CD, lasers made that possible. Scientists even use lasers to trap and cool atoms to temperatures near absolute zero. Amazingly, there are laser systems designed to detect and shoot down mosquitoes in flight, potentially preventing diseases. Lastly, you're, you're watching this video thanks to lasers, as global fiber optic internet relies entirely on laser technology. Clearly, lasers aren't just fascinating. They're among humanity's most incredible inventions. Who knows what other marvels we'll discover through lasers in the future? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it as much as I did making it, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We have plenty more content like this coming up. A huge thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.